This episode is supported by MonsterJoysticks.com. Level up your Raspberry Pi with our all-in-one arcade kit using genuine Sanwar arcade parts. And OneClickPrint.com for your photos on canvas, acrylic, gifts and more. Local craftsmen and global delivery. Hello cave dwellers, welcome to the cave for another tech nibble where we're talking yet again about the UK's addiction to cassette tapes, those slow loading but super cheap media formats. We talked recently about the wafer drive on the ZX Spectrum and we're visiting the ZX Spectrum again today for these, their ZX Spectrum ROM cartridges, definitely a contender for the smallest cartridge of the 80s. And it was so unsuccessful that I've got nearly a third of the entire cartridges released on the table here, only 10 ever came out. That's a collection even I might be able to complete. So let's find out more about the ZX Spectrum ROMs. Measuring in at just under 5 cm wide, just over 4 cm high and 1.2 cm deep, the ZX Spectrum ROM cartridge is nearly half the size of a Game Gear cartridge and a third of the size of a cassette tape. It was released in 1983 by Sinclair Research Limited, creators of the ZX Spectrum, and as this promotional leaflet shows, the cartridges were loaded via a hardware add-on called the ZX Interface 2. The ZX Interface 1 was released in the same year and supported Sinclair's other attempt at an alternative format, the ZX Microdrive, but this is the ZX Interface 2, priced at £19.95. The interface provides two joystick ports which were not standard on the original ZX Spectrum but were added to later models, and the flap could be lifted to slot in the ZX ROM cartridge, like so. The whole ensemble would then slot into the expansion interface port on the back of the ZX Spectrum, which is such a small machine in itself that any add-on is a significant increase to its footprint. And then we can plug a joystick in, the port with the small bump in front of it is joystick port 1, and our joystick today is none other than the star of previous Tech Nibble, it's Trevor the Tortoise. Alright there Trev. Ok so we've shelled out for our ZX Interface 2, but what do those ZX ROM cartridges offer us, and our 48k ZX Spectrum, that we don't already get from a cassette tape? Well we can let Nigel Searle of Sinclair Research tell us that, in his letter originally sent to prospective buyers in 1983. The benefits of using ROM cartridge software over cassette based software are convenience and speed. With ROM cartridges, programs are loaded instantly and faultlessly. You just plug in and play. Also, all ROM cartridges will work with a 16K Spectrum, even if the equivalent title on cassette will only work with a 48K Spectrum. Some attractive claims indeed then, programs which load instantly, faultlessly and allow us to play 48k titles on the original 16k ZX Spectrum. This we really need to put to the test to see how honest old Nigel really is. At the time of launch we were promised 10 games at the affordably priced £14.95 each, this at a time when affordable was the many hundreds of £1.99 cassettes in stores. Once again the claim is made that we can play games made for the 48k Spectrum on the 16k model. Here are those games, four of which have big red new logos next to them. On a leaflet where everything surely is new, this is the letter after all sent for the release of the interface, sneaky old Nigel. Of the 10 titles listed, every single one is available as a 16k cassette title. None of them are actually 48k exclusives, and there is a good reason for this. You see, the capacity of the ZX ROM cartridge is 16k, because there's no memory bank paging abilities in the ZX interface too. 16k is your absolute limit in 1983. 
you may squeeze a little extra into the ROM-based program without the overhead of Sinclair Basic loading when you turn the machine on, but they're certainly not going to load a 48K program on your 16K Spectrum as the leaflet alludes to. No magic RAM downloading abilities from our ZX ROM cartridge then, so what about Nigel's other claims of speed and reliability? Here are three examples we can test today in their original packaging, which is a small Sinclair branded cardboard box. Eco-friendly or biodegradable you might call it today, others might just call it cheap. I've got Trans Am and Jetpack, both by Ultimate Play the Game, who went on to become Game Studio Rare, and Horace and the Spiders by Scion. That Sinclair quality continues inside with a small black and white instruction booklet, telling us the backstory and controls. High scores of course were not saved, there's no battery backed up memory or anything fancy like that in the cartridge. But then we rarely saved our high scores to tape either. Bragging rights would be achieved with a well-timed Polaroid photograph. And that's what you get for your hard-earned £14.95, although soon all titles were reduced to £9.95 when it became apparent nobody actually wanted them. The cartridge is protected in the loosest way possible behind this orange rubber skirt which unsheathes when you slot it into the ZX interface. So speed and reliability then, let's see how we get on with our three games, starting with Jetpack and I'm testing this on a later ZX Spectrum Plus 3 simply because it was donated recently and I really want to play with it. The ZX interface works just fine with the later model ZX Spectrum, but we do have to use the built-in joystick ports instead of those on the ZX interface. When we turn it on you can see it really is instant. The moment we power on the game loads up and it just works. So Nigel's claims were indeed correct and this carries through to Horace and the Spiders as well as Trans Am. All three games speedy, reliable and in perfect working order all this time later but it is in no way giving us a full 48k game experience, let alone the 128k experience I might expect from a plus 3 Spectrum. And yes, Trevor is as painful as ever to use as a joystick. It will come as no surprise then to hear that not a single additional release was made to the original lineup of 10 titles. There were plans by Parker Brothers to release 7 ROMs including Popeye and the Star Wars arcade conversion, but they never materialised likely put off by the slow uptake of the format and the production costs when compared to cassette tapes. There was perhaps a missed opportunity in not releasing Pascal, Forth or other programming languages to appeal to wealthier business buyers. For the consumer, well, we clung on to our tape decks and our 199 budget titles from the likes of Codemasters, or if we were feeling a little more flush with our money there were always the big box packs like 100% Dynamite here for four explosive hits for less than the retail price of a 16K ROM cartridge. That 16K limitation was later overcome by enthusiasts making their own cartridges and a method to reconstruct a larger game in system RAM out of 16K chunks before executing it. But if that had been devised in 1983 then surely a cartridge with a 48K capacity would have taken the retail price of a game to £20 and well beyond. That's into games console territory and that was not what the humble, low-cost Spectrum or its owners were all about. So this has been a tech nibble about the ZX Spectrum ROM cartridge, gone and mostly forgotten, but in these examples still very much operational. Thank you for watching and take care.